The life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. The 60s and 70s were serious times. Certainly a matter of suffering. And in the days of the 60s, uh, the South was not the place to necessarily choose to spend your, your college years. My name is Del Merriweather. I arrived at Duke in the fall of 1963. I flew down from uh, Michigan, arrived at about 6 p.m., and I was in a hungry mood. The only thing within any walking distance or any distance at all was the restaurant, the blue light, which in the 60s did not serve blacks. I therefore walked for 20 minutes down to the blue light, went in the front door, and was escorted out. The hospital had four bathrooms for white men, white women, Negro men, and Negro women. To be in a school where there was such a lack of diversity was a little bit shocking. When I arrived at Duke, I had no idea that I was the first African-American woman in the medical school. My name is Jean Spaulding, and I arrived at Duke in 1968. The racial climate was charged during those days. And Ken and me were greeted in that first couple of weeks by a cross being burned on the front lawn of Colonial Apartments. And we just picked it up, extinguished it, and decided that should be a spot for planting flowers. It can be intimidating, it can get out of sorts if you don't know how to adjust to changes and to meet challenges that are over and above your personal ones. There were similar difficulties for those individuals who were integrating the faculty. The first barrier that I encountered was the ward clerks, all white females, never would speak. I'd ask about patient X, they would not ever answer. My name is Dr. Charles Johnson and I was appointed to the Duke Medical Faculty in September of 1970. I'm annoying to me, Dr. Stead and his group obviously had a workshop set up somewhere that the things that they were changing. So one day I looked up and all the ward clerks were black females. And although I saw them, it was such a gradual process and a quiet change. It wasn't something you right away paid attention to. The salvation for me when I got to do was my professors and my classmates. They were absolutely wonderful. My name is Eddie L. Hoover, and I arrived at Duke University School of Medicine in the fall of 1965. There were absolutely no overt instances of racism that I encountered. We had a wonderful faculty, and they really cared about us as students. There was a Dr. Ebert who had come down from Hopkins uh, in 65 to do the congenital heart disease cases. So he and Dr. Sabison were my primary mentors. So I looked up on those as my role models. I later learned that uh, Dr. Anion, who's been in medical school at the time, that they had meetings and they had decided that any patient who decided that they did not want me involved in their care would be politely asked to leave the medical center. I thought that was a very uh, bold stroke for them to, to do to make sure that the integration process worked. There were professors here who were wonderful, who made it very clear that there would not be discrimination and that I would get an opportunity to learn just as every other medical student. Charles was breaking down doors and breaking down barriers. So I always made students confront the person with whatever they were confronting them about so they would learn the behaviors they should know to deal with people on their own, not run to somebody else to save them. I think it was refreshing for the black employees in the cafeteria and in other parts of the hospital who had a chance to now feel proud of the kinds of work that they did because they had someone who had had an experience similar to theirs. 
I think that once the mid-60s came, that there was a distinct shift uh, with regard to Duke's intent to integrate and to integrate fully, not to pay lip service to integration, but to really fully integrate. Really, it's hard to imagine. Yet, it's one of the most successful institutions in the country, having started in 1930. I mean, that's really fantastic.